Hi there, welcome back. So today, let's talk about the big O. I know what you were thinking, but I mean the big O as in oxytocin. And while it's true that oxytocin is produced during sex and cuddling, oxytocin actually surges during childbirth and breastfeeding, and it's what enables that attachment between a mother and her newborn child. And neuroscientists believe that that attachment is such a primal need that there are actually networks of neurons in the brain dedicated to allowing us to form lasting bonds. Oxytocin is your brain signal that you're safe. See, the human brain has evolved to survive and we tend to be much more tuned in to the dangers or threats um, around us than we are to the good things. And I just don't mean physical threats. When we sense any kind of danger, including emotional ones, such as the fear of judgment or the anxiety of rejection, the brain prepares the body by releasing cortisol. The heart pumps a little bit faster, the muscles tighten, and we get ready to react in a certain way. And all of this happens in the downstairs brain or the survival brain. But when we feel safe and accepted and experience a sense of belonging, the brain actually decreases that flow of cortisol and releases oxytocin, which facilitates activity in the upstairs brain where all of our rational thinking and decision-making processes take place. While it is often called the cuddle drug, it's not just created in the bedroom. The brain also produces oxytocin in non-intimate situations, like those platonic touches we experience when we hug a good friend, or when those touches that we have in those social interactions, or even just the feeling of belonging. The human brain is wired to connect with others. And what that means is that it's not just a nice to have, it's a must have. Interacting with others is a fundamental human need and it's essential to our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. In some extreme cases, infants who don't receive enough human contact fail to thrive and often die. But a lack of human connectedness and a lack of oxytocin aren't just troublesome for babies. Numerous studies have examined the psychological effects of human interaction into adulthood. And now, new research presented at the 125th Annual Convention of the American Psychological Association shows that loneliness and isolation exacerbate poor health. To quantify the impact of lo loneliness and isolation, two significant meta-analyses were conducted. The first reviewed a total of 218 studies, and they found that higher social connectedness is linked to as much as a 50% decrease in the risk of early death. The second included data from over 3 million people in North America, Asia, Europe and Australia, and they found that social isolation and loneliness can significantly increase the risk for premature mortality, and the magnitude of that risk exceeds that of many leading health indicators, such as smoking, obesity, and heart disease. So, if you wanna give your brain and your health a boost, do something that will turn off the cortisol tap and turn on the oxytocin, call a friend, Schedule a lunch date. Connect in a meaningful way with someone at work. Sign up to volunteer in your community. Or, even better, look around you for someone who may be feeling isolated or lonely. You'll both get a boost of oxytocin. We're social creatures and we're wired to connect. So get out there and make the big O happen in your corner of the world today. Want to learn more about how the brain works? Check out my book, Happy Hour with Einstein to understand how laughter, doodling, movement, and gratitude change the way we think and learn. And remember, life is always better when you share the good stuff.